G'day, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. In today's video, I've got a long awaited tutorial on port forwarding in relation to your local and your public IP address. Let's get started. So some of my most popular videos I've uploaded to YouTube to date are actually tutorials on how to set up port forwarding on your home router for game servers. I keep getting asked the same questions over and over. And it's all to do with the confusion between your internal IP address or local IP address versus your external or public IP address and the relationship between the internal and external ports. How do your friends join them? What IP address do you give to your friends? Well, this is good feedback. It tells me that there's a lapse in the information that I've put in my previous videos, meaning I just need to come back and make another video to simplify these things to help you guys overcome these small hurdles in setting up your home network. So let's look at what is port forwarding and why do we use it? Port forwarding is basically set up to separate the traffic coming in and out of your network. Different applications use different ports. Not all applications need to talk to the outside world. We wanna try and lock down some of these applications. There might be instances where you do want to have access to these applications from outside. Maybe you wanna remote connect to your computer from outside. Maybe you wanna set up an FTP server. Maybe you wanna set up a Minecraft server. So therefore, external internet traffic needs to make it through to your network and through to the particular machine. Now these services might be on different machines. Well. Port forwarding is the way that we're going to tell your router to let that traffic through to that particular device. Think of port forwarding as addressing a package to a apartment building. If you just send the parcel to the street address of the apartment block, your parcel's not gonna make it through to the person you want it to. No, you need to put the room number. So think of the room number as that port number. We don't always want to allow every port to stay open. And I can't stress this enough. It makes me cringe when I go to a YouTube tutorial on setting up port forwarding and their instructions are to set up a DMZ on your router and point it to your main desktop gaming rig. Setting that up is leaving the door wide open for a cyber attack. Having every port open is going to allow someone to probe your network connection, find vulnerabilities and take over your computer. Now that's a bad day in the office as far as I'm concerned. When I started preparing for this video, I started writing down all the ports that I know of that are vulnerable, um, how people can exploit these ports and how to prevent people from getting through these ports when you do have them open. And the problem is that's a very deep dark rabbit hole and there was far too much information. The more I tried to simplify things, the deeper I seemed to go. And I'll be honest, this video would have gone for well over an hour if I had have followed that path. So I decided to cut that because I don't want you guys all to unsubscribe because my videos are just lengthy and boring. No, I'm trying to grow my channel. So the more subscribers, the better. And on that note, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you do like this video by the end, give it a thumbs up. Leave me some feedback down below. And hey, if I haven't covered off what you need to know, Ask the question. I'm more than happy to try and help. So let's have a look at this little network diagram I've made here. Now, I've tried to keep this network diagram simple, but at the same time, I wanted to show that there is complexity to the networks that we connect to. So we can see in the center here, this is the internet. We've got several different cities there, and then we're simulating going out to particular networks. So we've got a home network here on the top left, We've got a work network on the top right. We've got a game network on the bottom right. And you could think of that as say Steam or EA or Ubisoft. And then we've got another home network on the bottom left over here. Now you'll note that there's different public IP addresses and that's the IP addresses written in the blue. So we can see that the top two have very close IP addresses. So I guess we're looking at that being two places in the one town, home and work. And down the bottom, you can see we've got very different IP addresses. So these could be on completely different corners of the world. What you will notice is the internal IP addresses on both the home networks are on the same subnet range and the IP addresses on the work networks are on the same subnet range. 
And I've done it deliberately like this because people seem to get confused between that local IP address or the private IP address. So these are common private IP addresses to use on your network router, and that's 192.168.0.1 or 10.0.0.1. Now, personally, I prefer to use 10.0.0.1 because it's just so much easier to type, particularly when you're trying to ping to your network. So I've done it like this deliberately so that you can see. If you're at work, how would you connect to the network on the gaming network if you just use the private IP address? It doesn't translate. And same if you were on the home network and you were trying to connect to your work, let's just say you were trying to connect to 10.0.0.80 you can see at work, that's a printer, but on the gaming network, that's a server. So that's why we use the public IP address, which is the network address in the blue. From there, we would set up a port forwarding rule. Say you wanted to print to your work from your home. You would set up a port forwarding rule in your router, pointing an external port. And let's just say for instance, say let's say 3000 is your port that you want to forward. So you would set up a port forwarding rule on your router to 10.0.0.80 on port 3000. But what if you had more than one printer? Maybe the printer by default has hardwired in there port 3000. Well, you can't set up multiple port forwarding rules to allow you to connect to port 3000 to three different printers. So that's where on the external port, you would change it to translate to say 3001. 3002 and that's how you'd get to your other two printers from home you'd connect to 110.112.88.19 port 3000 or port 3001 or port 3002 other ports that we might want to have open let's just say i want to connect to the file server at work i'd set up a port forwarding rule for rdp which is port 3389 that's remote desktop pointing it to 10.0.0.100. But what if I wanted to remote connect into the application server or the web server? Well, that's easy. I go into the router and I set up a port forwarding rule, 10.0.0.101, and I'd set the internal port to be 3389, but the external port to be 3390. I mean, I could set the external port to anything I want. I like to keep it within the same sort of range, just so it's easier to remember when you're, when you're typing these things in from home. So if we look at the home network, we've also got a lot going on there. We've got some smart devices, we've got some printers, we've got some laptops, desktops, but we've also got some surveillance cameras. This is, and this is something that people are putting into their homes more and more. So once again, our surveillance cameras are both on 192.168.0.50, so I'd have to set up a port forwarding rule in my router, forwarding, let's just say port 4000 to 192.168.0.58, port 4000. And so if I was at work and I wanted to have a look at my cameras and see what's going on in my front yard, I would connect to 110.25.10.11, port 4000. Starting to make sense now? So you've got your internal ports, you've got your external ports, but the important thing is when you're connecting from outside your network, you need to make sure you're using that public IP address. Not sure on what your public IP address is? Just go onto Google and type, what's my IP? And it'll tell you your IPv4 address. So here's the next problem. Let's just say you're trying to set up a Minecraft server on a virtual machine in your house. You've got it all set up right, it's tested, it's working. You give your friends your public IP address, they connect to it. Two days later, they try to connect and they can't get through. You don't have a static IP address set up on your network. So when you turn off your router and you disconnect from the internet, when you turn it back on, you'll be issued a new IP address from your internet service provider. And you'll find this is very common when you're having problems with the internet and they tell you to turn off your router for more than 30 seconds and then turn it back on. They're trying to cycle you through to a new IP address. Now, there's ways to get around that. If that's the case, you can set up a dynamic IP address or a dynamic DNS. I'll put a link down in the description below to one of the common sites I use. It's free, it's easy to set up. You need to download the client on your computer and it basically just refers back to their server and says, hey, here's my new local IP address. And it just keeps letting it know backwards and forwards. So your friends would type in a web address that would translate to your IP address, which would connect them to your computer. 
nice and simple. Now this leads on to the next problem. If you're setting up a port forwarding rule for a device on your local network, you need to make sure that device has a static IP address set. The smartest way to do this is through your router. Go into your router, go into the DHCP settings, and make sure you add that particular device and assign it a static IP address. So you can manually type in the IP address you always want that device to have whenever it connects to the internet. Because same again like your router, if you go and turn off all your devices in your house, let's say you go away for a weekend, when you come home and you turn everything back on, all these devices are gonna connect to your network and say, hey, give me an IP address. And it depends on the order they connect to the internet or connect to your network is gonna depend on which IP address it gets assigned. So if you set a static, Every time that device connects, it's already got that IP address reserved. Very important. So we've just covered off internal IP address being your private IP address, your external IP address being your public IP address, why you need to have a static internal IP address or static private IP address on your devices, why it's important that you really wanna have a static IP address on your public IP, now you have to pay for that if you want to go through that. If you go into your internet service provider, they're going to charge you, I don't know, anywhere from $10 to $20 a month for a static public IP address. Some, IP, some ISPs don't even offer this service, so just be aware of that. We've covered the internal port and the external port. The internal port is the port on, the, on that device that you're forwarding the traffic to, and the external port is where that traffic is coming from. That's the port that you give to the outside world. Without that, you're not gonna to connect to that device. Now, on a side note, I also wanna cover off, you may not be able to set up port forwarding on your device. Some internet service providers actually terminate your connection at the node. Now, that means that there's one public IP address for that node, and everyone is sharing off of that. So they're actually setting up port forwarding from their node to your property. Now this is very common on wireless internet. So 4G, 5G, if you're using your mobile device or if you're using a little dongle, you're probably not gonna be able to set up port forwarding. Well guys, I don't wanna stretch this out too long. I think I've covered off enough there and I don't wanna keep chewing your ear off. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you've liked this, throw me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching, bye.